G'day, Lockie here. Today I wanted to go over a new tool that was announced earlier this morning um, from the fantastic team over at Heptio. And the tool's name is Arc. And what Arc sets out to achieve is to uh, give you some disaster recovery um, for your Kubernetes cluster. Now, disaster recovery not only backup and restore capability um, for cluster resources and persistent volumes. Um, and this tool has been released with uh, cloud provider plugins. So it supports Azure, uh, Google Cloud, and uh, AWS. So I want to give a quick demo of how it works, just to give you a really quick idea of uh, what you might expect from this tool, but it's fantastic. I've had some time to play with it today, and I'm really excited about uh, what the future holds for this project. So congrats to the Heptio team. I'm going to go through kind of this quick start. I've covered a bit of it um, in the background before this, just some prerequisite pieces, uh, but the rest is just what you see is what you get. So let's dive in here. Uh, I'm going to go over to my Azure portal here, and I've actually spun up uh, a 1.7 cluster on Azure, Kubernetes 1.7, and I've created a storage account for the backups uh, to be stored in. So you can see here I have this Kubernetes backup directory under the Heptio arc. So I'll refer back to this a little later. Uh, that's all you need to know now. Pop over to the terminal. And what we're actually going to do here is, I'll just show you what I'm working with. So I have a, a Kubernetes 172 cluster provisioned with uh, ACS Engine on Azure uh, with RBAC enabled. So to kick this off, I actually have a, a script here. What we're going to do is just install some prerequisites. So let's take a look at what that does. Okay, so um, one of the things that this has a dependency on is Kubernetes 1.7, and the reason for that is um, custom resource definitions. So you can see that there's four custom resource definitions configured as part of the prerequisites. Now, custom resource definitions, or CRDs, were introduced in Kubernetes 1.7, and these are the successor to third-party resources. So everything will be moving to them. Um, Arc has uh, made a decision to use them from the get-go. So you need to have a Kubernetes 1.7 cluster if you're following along at home. Uh, so it's created these uh, CRDs, a namespace called Heptio Arc, a service, some service accounts and some cluster role binding. So hats off, it's RBAC enabled out of the gate. So uh, fantastic, thank you for doing that. What we're now going to do is just create a secret with the cloud credentials that give access to that storage bucket that I just defined. Um, so this is just creating a secret in the, the Heptio namespace. So that cloud credentials secret has been created. Okay, now we're actually gonna go and deploy this to Azure. Okay, so we've got a, a default config created and a deployment called Arc. Let's take a look at that, kubectl get pods in the namespace heptio arc. So we have a pod here running. All right. And what I want, would like to also do here is just get the log. So we'll tail the logs on this pod. Cube, sys, uh, cube system, force a habit there. Heptio arc. Um, and I want to tail minus effort. Okay. Okay, so you can see that I have actually been playing around with this, so there are backup records here. Um, and Arc is actually using these custom resource definitions to create uh, resources under um, underneath them. So if we take a look at here, if we do a kubectl get uh, CRD, you can see that we have backups, configs, restores, and schedules here. Um, and if we query backups in particular, in the namespace uh, heptio arc. So this is kind of going off script a little bit here, but you can see there's some backups in here. So um, arc is actually using Kubernetes as its um, storage mechanism. So Kubernetes is obviously persisting to um, etcd. So a little bit off script there, um, but just so you know how it works. So we have what we've done so far, just to, just to recap, is we've installed the prerequisites and we've actually stored, installed the controller, um, the Arc controller, that listens on these custom resource definitions. So we're actually ready to deploy something now. So I'm going to deploy an Nginx in a namespace called uh, Nginx example. There's a deployment and a service. So over here on the right-hand side, I'm just, I have a watch 
um, and we can see we have a deployment with two replicas and they're up and running. So this is now simulating I have something running on Kubernetes that I would like to back up. Let me just pop over to my IDE here and show you exactly what I deployed. So you can see there's three, um, three resources in here. The main thing I want to take away and uh, for you to take away is that they're all labeled. So the way we can create backups is um, using label selectors. Okay, so before we leave here, so we're going to use the arc binary here to create a backup called nginx backup with the selector app equals nginx. So we're telling arc, please back up anything with that label selector, which is using some fantastic work in uh, Kubernetes. We're using label selectors. So I would expect anything that's labeled with app nginx to be backed up. Okay, so before I, let me copy that command over. So I'm going to run that command here and I haven't actually set my cube config file here. So let me go ahead and export that. Um, export cube config equals, all right. So let me go and run this again. All right, so in the log files here, we can see that we're backing up a bunch of different resources, um, but we asked it only to back up anything with the selector app equals nginx. I'll pop over to um, my port Azure portal here and I wanna show you what's actually happened. Okay, so we have this backup folder. So remember I did a, a backup create. Um, and I called it the Nginx backup. So you can see that this is published at 11.06. This is right now. So you can, there's a, a JSON file here and there's a backup tarball, which is the metadata about exactly the resources that I backed up. Now I'm going to delete that namespace. Okay. So what we're simulating here is a, is a catastrophic failure where we've lost a set of applications. Um, over on the right hand side we should see those being terminated as that namespace is cleaned up. Um, and while we do that, let's take a look. Um, backup, get. So we can see we actually have three backups here. These are the some ones I was doing earlier and I just took this one now. There's an expiry on it and the selector. So we can see that that was successfully completed. And before I actually deleted the Nginx um, named example namespace, which deletes all the resources that are in there. So this is catastrophic failure. Now I need to get back. So we get back using a restore and we just feed in the, um, the backup name. Okay, so we're going to restore create Nginx backup. And what this is going to do is restore um, from that data that's stored in that uh, Azure storage blob account. And you can see here that this deployment is back. So the namespace, the service, and the deployment has been recreated. So we've gone from um, taking a backup with a label selector, deleting all those resources with that label selector to demonstrate a, a catastrophic failure. And then we've restored from the backup. So that's use case one, restoring, um, creating backups and restoring um, Kubernetes resources. So this is, I'm already super excited, but I'm more excited about the next part. Uh, so let me go on ahead and nuke this again. So I'm going to delete the Nginx example. I'll pop over here to my, um, my script here. So what I want to show you is we're going to do a cube cuddle apply again, but this time we're going to demonstrate uh, doing a backup of a PV. Okay, so let's see, example. Oh, so the, the reason this is errored is because I've tried to put it in the namespace, which is currently being deleted. So let me just run this again. I was a little too quick there. Okay, so we can see we've got a namespace, we've got a PVC, a deployment and a service. So this is very similar to last time. Um, I've actually just pinned down um, the replicas to one just to demonstrate one. And what we should see here, if we open up cube cuddle get PVC and comma PV in the namespace nginx example. So we've asked for this premium, uh, manage premium storage class. So this is in pending state now. 
so while that volume gets spun up and attached to uh, that pod we can take a quick look over in the portal um, and, and see if I can actually see that PV right so you can see this is actually being provisioned now here's this dynamic uh, managed disk being spun up All right. Oh, still impending. That must have been the last demo I did and I didn't actually delete it. Okay, so there's another one being spun up here. Okay, now it is it. 437B, so that's it, it's attached. We're now in container creating and we should go to running pretty quickly. So this is modeling, I have an Nginx with a persistent volume. Um, we're gonna actually back up the persistence vol persistent volume here. Container creating. Now, under the hood here, what happens with the persistent volume backups is it actually takes a snapshot of a point in time of that persistent volume um, on the provider. So I'm using Azure, it's telling Azure to take a snapshot of that persistent volume that's been created there. So once this goes to running, uh, we'll put some log files in. Now this is fantastic, because if anybody deletes anything from a persistent volume, if you have a snapshot, you can restore that snapshot that state of that um, persistent volume to that point in time which is fantastic I think a lot of people are going to be excited about that okay let's let's go and have a look okay so we're in running now okay so what I'm going to do is pop over my script here we need to actually label it because by default uh, we're using label selectors so we want to get the PV name here um, and we're going to label that PV with app equals nginx because remember again we want to do a backup on labels so we need to search that label selector app equals nginx okay so I'm going to create another backup here and instead of just doing the label selector I'm going to say also snapshot the volumes so let's go ahead and make 0 2 okay so backing it up, backed up, set, created successfully. If we take a peek at the logs over here, snapshotting persistent volume. So we're actually taking a snapshot of that volume. As mentioned earlier, so if I go over and have a look, you can see that I have a snapshot of that volume. FD47. Um, and that's a snapshot of this volume just here. Fantastic. So that looks to have happened. So let's go and demonstrate a catastrophic failure here again. We'll delete the namespace and we'll delete the PV. So we've deleted the namespace and we've deleted the PV. So what we should be able to do now is actually restore. No, no resources. Let's just wait. Oh, that backup is actually completed here, the final status. So if we do an arc backup get, we should see that Nginx02 is completed. Um, so that's ready to go. We've deleted those resources. Now we should be able to do a restore. So arc restore create, and we want to restore backup02. Okay, so we're going to go through again, restore all those resources. PV. And now we can see we're actually restoring from that snapshot. It's in pending state. Okay, restore complete. So we've actually gone back to that point in time that we took the snapshot. So let's see. So we're back at bound, we've restored it back to that point in time and this pod should come back up and running. So, fantastic. So we made it through both use cases there, uh, backing up and restoring of uh, cluster resources in Kubernetes and backup and restoration of actually uh, persistent volumes. So this is a fantastic tool. I um, hope you found this beneficial. 
Uh, thanks for joining. Cheers.